Hello, my name is Alice and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about hustle culture. Hustle culture is dead. If you didn't realize, hustle culture is dead. It is gone. We are putting it in a grave. We are putting away that unhealthy toxic mindset and what we're going to talk about instead is what I've decided to call the healthy hustle and that is a way to formulate your mind and your brain so that you can get stuff done in a positive and not toxic way because I think as artists we all know we do kind of have to hustle sometimes if we want to get stuff done like if we want to be successful then we do kind of have to hustle and work and things like that but how can we do that in a healthy and productive way and that's what I'm here to talk to you about in this video so during this video I'm going to be painting on this little wooden cir circular coaster type thing and I'm going to be painting a little fish in a little mushroom forest underwater water mushroom forest. So that's what I'm going to be working on. And while I work on that, I'm going to talk, like I said, about that healthy hustle. So what does a healthy hustle look like? Well, the first thing, if you're going to do a healthy hustle is you need to figure out your purpose and what drives you because the biggest component to hustling in a healthy way is enjoying what you're doing. So if you hate what you're doing, don't put all your time and energy into it. There's really no point. Um, don't you, we only have limited energy, limited time, whether you are neurodivergent, whether you're chronically ill or whether you don't deal with any of those issues, we still only have so much energy and time that we can give to certain things. So make sure that you're giving your energy into the things that matter to you and the things that drive you don't burn out your energy on things that simply aren't important. So along with that, make sure that you plan things out. If you want to hustle um, and be healthy at the same time, then it's important to plan things out so that you're not doing too much work per day. It may seem like to hustle, you want to constantly be working and doing stuff literally all the time. But at the end of the day, if you're constantly doing that, you are going to burn yourself out. If you burn yourself out, then you can't put in the effort that you want to put in the next day. So make sure that you remember to plan your day out, plan out your week so that you have an idea of what you want to do that day. Along with that, make sure that you have like different things that you can do each day. So recently I came across the idea of daily themes. So I have some daily themes. I'll have a main daily theme and then I'll have a daily theme that's a backup daily theme for if I'm really just like not feeling it that day. So you can plan out, okay, today I'm going to reply to all my emails. I'm going to have kind of like a CEO day. And then as a backup day, you can have a content creation day. So if you're like, I can't reply to emails today, I just can't do it. You can do some content creation and still feel like you're getting stuff done by having this back backup option, you're not ever going to be stressed about what to do that day. And you're not going to be feeling like you're just not doing stuff because you don't feel like doing the thing that you're supposed to do that day. Along with planning things out, it's really important to take breaks. Make sure that you're taking breaks. Breaks are so, so important. Um, if you don't take breaks, your body will take a break for you. And it can feel frustrating taking breaks. It can feel, again, like the opposite of hustling or getting your work done. But one thing I try to remind myself is that hustling is not going to happen if you don't take care of yourself and your body. And so part of hustling is taking care of your body. Part of hustling is hustling to take that rest to take that break because that is a creative reset. We need to charge our phones. Sometimes your phone dies and you need to charge it and your phone is going to die if you keep ignoring those warnings, those 20% battery left, 10% battery left. Well, your body is the same way and your body is going to be giving you those warnings. 20% battery left, 10% battery left. Stop ignoring those warnings. I know you're ignoring them, so stop ignoring them. <laughs> um, it's not going to help you. You're not going to get more work done. You're just going to take energy from the next day and you'll get less work done the next day. Just focus on being consistent, not getting everything done in one day. Again, with planning things out, make sure you plan out those breaks when you're going through and setting up your weekly schedule. Make sure that you have a day that's just for creativity, just for personal stuff. It can be really hard when you're like trying to hustle for work, having a work-life balance because you really want to just be working all the time and trying to get stuff done. And it can be really hard to take the time to go and do your laundry or go outside or do something for yourself. And so by scheduling in those days, you have time to go and explore the world and catch up on your chores and make sure that you're living in a space that makes you happy and inspired. And that is important. It's important to take breaks. And when you're taking those breaks, um, 
you need to remind yourself that you're recharging your creativity and you're not going to have creative ideas if you don't explore the world, if you don't go outside, if you're not exposing yourself to other areas of inspiration and things like that. So it's really important to take these planned out breaks simply to retain your creativity and retain that energy that you need so that you can keep going day after day. You need to retain that energy. You can't let yourself, you can't let your phone die of not being charged every single night and then you have to recharge it and then you sit there without your phone because it's on the charger. No, we're not going to do that to our bodies. We're going to take planned out breaks. We're going to care for our bodies and we're going to schedule in time for self-care. Self-care can be things like journaling, scrapbooking, um, taking some time for yourself, doing a face mask, you know, spending some time meditating, doing some yoga, anything that really brings you back into your body and makes you mindful is really helpful for self-care. And that is really going to help to preserve your energy so that you can really focus on getting done what you need to get done when you are working on that. It's important to give yourself time and space specifically for yourself because you need to take care of yourself. The last thing that I want to talk about is making sure that you don't succumb to the expectations of quote unquote the algorithm or anything else around you. Social media can be really, really toxic, but if you are an artist, it is an unfortunate necessity of our job. Um, if you're an artist, you probably get sick of all those people saying, I quit social media and I feel so much better. And you're like, that's cool. I can't do that because I literally need social media to advertise my artwork and to share my artwork. So if you're somebody that you can't quit social media because you need it for your job, then what we need to do is we need to manage our expectations of social media. The first thing to remember is that followers are not as important as engagement. Look at how many people are seeing your videos, not how many people are actually following you. Today's creator economy is a content-based economy. It's not a creator-based economy. That means people absorb content without necessarily getting involved or engaged with the creator. So they may absorb a lot of your content, but never actually follow you. They may just like your content. That's just kind of like what TikTok has done to the creator economy. And you are never going to be able to figure out or trick the algorithm. The algorithm is going to do what it's going to do. It's going to show people what they think they would like. So your best thing to do is to create things that you would like. Um, would you find this interesting? Always ask yourself that. If you're getting bored watching your own videos or your own content, then it's not good content. You shouldn't be getting bored when you're watching your own stuff or when you're um, re-watching your content. So instead of succumbing to these expectations of the algorithm or of social media of I need to have this many followers, I need to have this much engagement, this or that, focus instead on what you want to be creating and what your purpose is and what you want to bring to the world. I want to bring education and advice to fellow artists, especially artists that are just starting out. I want to help inspire people that didn't think they could be artists to be artists. And I've recently started tailoring a lot of my expectations and ideas around that. So if I didn't get as many views as I wanted, but I have a comment saying that this really helped me, that can be enough. So focus on the positive, don't focus on the negative and try to like even write down positive things you know we were talking about being mindful and scheduling out self-care write down the positive comments that you get the things that mean a lot to you because that's also going to be really helpful I hope this gave you some ideas as to how to hustle healthily and to keep yourself healthy and in a positive mindset while also being able to get a lot of work done. If you follow these tips, you're going to retain your energy and your creativity and you're going to be able to get a lot more work done than if you were just constantly go, go, go. So thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful and you liked my little art and as always, have a great rest of your day. 